Do you remember the kid in year 7 with a serious sight impediment who would always watch over your shoulder whenever you were playing games on the school computer during lunch? Have you ever wondered where he is today? Welcome to Elite Dangerous, a game designed by a team comprised exclusively out of people with perfectionist complexes, featuring a fully explorable Milky Way galaxy more detailed than the Milky Way itself. What's that Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands? Your map is 440 kilometers squared. That's cute. Next time try a 1 to 1 scale Milky Way galaxy based on real scientific principles, scientific data, star catalogs and theories. You want to hear the rich story of the Elite series? How Frontier have made what I would consider the largest and most impressive undertaking of any game development anyone has ever participated in? How they made a 1 to 1 scale digital replica of our entire galaxy as close to humanly possible using the real world information about known space available to us today? This video will be done in two parts. Part 1 will be an introduction to the Elite Dangerous game and a very serious synopsis on how it functions and part two will be detailing the rich history of the elite series and will also be a mental endurance test for those of you watching who haven't yet experienced a brain hemorrhage so get cozy grab a snack buckle your fuckers and prepare to enjoy Elite Dangerous is a game. Much like Minecraft, I come back to you every couple of months to play religiously to the point of hypoxia. You agree to stay away! I lied. Welcome to My Strange Addiction, a digital experience depicting what it might be like as a blue collar working class citizen 2000 years from now, forced to live in a world where the main two galactic superpowers are America and a literal galactic empire who, in the past 90 odd centuries, have had only one female leader because the founding father of said empire used genetic modification to ensure that everyone born under his rule had anger issues. What you do in this vast open experience is up to you. Do you want to transport goods from star system to star system, making pennies to the dollar serving the whims of your capitalist overlords? Or maybe you'd rather be a pirate and shoot everything on sight like the sociopathic baboon you are. Me personally, I prefer to spend a good hard day's work down in the asteroid mines because it's always been my life's dream to develop black lung and this is the closest I can get without committing to a nicotine addiction. More on that later. Elite Dangerous strives for realism and is a very convincing depiction of what life could be like once we develop interstellar travel. There are no cutscenes. Everything is in real time. Everything has to be done manually. If you want to get something done, you have to do it yourself. This makes for a surprisingly and confusingly engaging game, especially for something so slow paced. Normally, my orangutan brain throws a fit if I don't get to shoot someone within the first five minutes of playtime. Luckily for me, this game is exhilarating. Every activity I perform somehow knows the perfect way to just massage my brain in all the right ways, which makes it a shame that the only means of transportation to said activities is so boring. I would highly recommend this game to anyone that have no other responsibilities because the sheer amount of dedication and time required to get anywhere in this game is fucking ridiculous. If you clicked on this video because you're considering buying Elite Dangerous then just know you're going to need a very stable internet connection because not only will 40% of 200% of your time playing this game be in Google Chrome but also because Elite Dangerous requires an internet connection. Even playing in solo mode requires an internet connection to access the system data because the in-game economy is affected by everyone currently playing. The game straight up won't even open without internet, so naturally it's near impossible to get into the game if you live anywhere in Australasia. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let me tell you how to get the most out of your Elite Dangerous experience. The optimal way to play this game is to 1. 
Listen to the Ghost Runner soundtrack. I have a playlist on Spotify specifically for playing Elite Dangerous if you want to experience it for yourself. And two, use VR. VR enhances this game significantly to a point I can't even believe. The only reason most of this footage you're seeing isn't VR gameplay is because I have Parkinson's. There is a whole section of the cockpit that poor people don't even see. The entire interior of the bridge of your ship is modelled. Most people will tell you that in order to play Elite Dangerous in VR, you need to fork out the dough for a HOTAS, because it's impossible to play without being able to see your keyboard. These people are wrong, and are most likely employed. I, however, have no job, and am no longer a student. I've spent the past two months mastering the fine and subtle art of operating my Type 9 Heavy with a keyboard in the metaverse. Yes, I do have friends, you just don't know them because they go to a different school. When you start out, you're going to be dropped into one of the three starting systems, with Baby's first spaceship, and barely enough funds to refuel it. Then, you're going to discover your first problem. Elite Dangerous does not have a learning curve. It has a learning wall, which can only be overcome with the help of someone who hates himself enough to learn the game on their own. So, if you're interested in playing Elite Dangerous but cannot scale that wall, don't fret. The solution is easy. Simply have friends. Failing that, continue to listen to my advice, because I don't get enough pussy for the both of us. Allow me to do all the heavy lifting for you. Firstly, do enough odd transport missions in your shitty Sidewinder until you can afford to consistently refuel your ship. Then, you're going to take part in what is known in the community as the Road to Riches. Basically, scan celestial bodies nobody else has scanned and get paid for it. Pretty easy. But, arguably the best way to make money in Elite Dangerous is Void Opal Mining. By now, you probably have enough money to afford the Asperger's Explorer. I'm not going to get into the details of how to get started Void Opal Mining, simply because of how daunting the setup can be to a new player. So I've linked a decent tutorial down below if you're genuinely interested. When out looking for Void Opals, you're going to want to keep an eye out for this specific asteroid model. Now I know what you're thinking. Vexus. What the hell? That is a rock. How does this look any different to what I'm currently seeing on screen? I know. I know. But trust me, with the amount of time you'll be spending in these asteroid fields, it won't be long before the only thing your cognitive functions have the ability to recognize is this specific rock. Void Opal Mining. The one outlet I have that's more fulfilling than attacking strangers on the street. Whenever I'm out in the rings, I have a strange and powerful urge to sing The Working Man and start a union with my fellow miners. But I digress. All you need to know is... Is the stuff. Once you've earned enough from mining void opals, go ahead and treat yourself to the Type 9 Heavy. Outfit it to mine more void opals until you realize it drives like a brick. Sell it and buy a crate 2 instead. Much better. Which brings me to the parts of Elite Dangerous that are really good. The sound design. Everything in this game feels like worms in my ears. I know that sounds weird, but trust me, it's a good thing. Everything sounds exactly like what you would expect it to sound like. Listen to this and you'll understand. Everything in this game sounds immaculate. I'm not sure when Frontier's gonna let me use their time machine, but I'm not complaining, as long as they keep putting it to good use. Combat, and to an extent, the flying mechanics. 
Combat in Elite Dangerous is insanely good. There's nothing quite like zooming through an environment, managing power distribution, just barely keeping your ship together, and commanding your AI fighter, all just to make it through with the skin of your teeth after your entire power plant shut down mid-fight. This is how I remind myself in the morning that I am better than you. Um. Scale. There's not much to talk about here. Everything is big, and big is good. And finally, just scooting along a planet's surface is strangely really fun. Delay six, Victor, Echo, X-Ray. Please decrease your throttle at the premises, Commander. There are children and extremely few puppies living here. I don't know why this specific part of the game is so distracting, but if I can spend a whole day without thinking about how it lives in my sink, then I see no problem. Elite Dangerous succeeds at presenting all of these features in an incredibly satisfying way, and helps me forget I no longer have a soul. And for that, I would like to give Frontier a gold star for doing such good work. I am very proud of you Frontier, you almost make me want to not start saving up for Star Citizen. Almost. And finally, the community. Elite Dangerous has an amazingly kind community that I've never interacted with because I'm too scared to use the public lobbies. So I'm not really qualified to vouch for them, however one good example that I am familiar with is the fan group known as the Fuel Rats, a large faction of players whose only goal is to help out other stranded players who have run out of fuel. Simply log off, let them know what star system you're in, and they'll sort you out. There are some really interesting stories about them on YouTube, and I would really recommend you check them out. I've played this game for about 140 hours specifically for this video, and in the said time, I've accrued such a crippling amount of debt that I'm too scared to play the game anymore out of fear of losing another ship, and not being able to afford to buy it back. Now, I've talked about the stuff I like. It's only fair I talk about some of the stuff that I don't like. <clears throat> in order. 1. I now will never know the touch of a woman. The only woman I need is my crate mark 2. Isn't she gorgeous? 3. I can't have a Falcon de Lacey Anaconda in real life. And 4. Why is it whenever I tell my parents that I'm coming home for the weekend, they tell me to get a job and that making YouTube videos doesn't count? This video was originally meant to be one part, but because I lack the ability to retain people's attention beyond 9 minutes, and also because I'm kinda lazy, I'm splitting it into two. So to finish off part 1, I'm going to leave you with a story. Old MacDonald sat on a wall. Old MacDonald had a great fall. Mother called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. I don't like the way my skin feels on my body. Do you like the way your skin feels on your body? You don't? Why don't you pull it off? Pull off your skin. <laughs> oh shit. I think that would kill me. I